Hi friends, and welcome to Tiny Technical Tutorials, where we do bite-sized lessons for today's tech. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to use morph transitions in PowerPoint. First, we'll see how to bring your charts and numbers alive, like the sales data here. Secondly, we'll make your process or flowcharts more engaging with progressions like this one here. And lastly, we'll see how to pan around to different parts of an image to highlight what's most important, like on this map. You can accomplish all of these things and more using Morph Transitions, which is a feature that rolled out with PowerPoint 2019. Now let's work together to build out those examples you just saw. Let's start with our sales slides here. You'll see that we have one for 2020 sales data and then another one for 2021 sales data. What a morph transition does is it'll take this first slide, the 2020 slide, and change it into the second one, and PowerPoint will automatically handle all the magic and the movement between those two. You don't have to tell it where objects start or end or how fast to move between anything. All of that just happens for you automatically. All you need to do is pick your second slide here, the one that we're on, 2021, and then up under Transitions, this is a transition, not an animation, you'll select Morph. You just want it on that second slide. You saw it gave you a preview there. You can always preview it again. And there you go, pretty easy. I also wanna show you the effect options over here. The default will be to move the objects. So those are the bars in this example that are moving. You can also choose to morph the words. This one's actually not gonna to look too much different because the currencies are treated as single words, but you could use characters. And with that, it's going to move a single letter or number at a time. Pretty easy, huh? Okay, let's move down to our next example here. This was our process diagram or a flow diagram. Maybe you have something like this that's moving left to right. And during a presentation, you want to talk to each of the five elements, spend a minute or two on each one. That means your slide's going to be static for quite a while and people are probably going to zone out. So let's use a morph transition on these and make it a little bit more engaging. The first thing I need to do is duplicate the slide several times. So I'll right click on the slide, say duplicate. And I'll do that a few more times. So we have several slides that are identical. Let me do that one more time. And we'll start up on the top slide. This one we only want to display that far left element, brainstorm ideas. So I'll select all of these others and delete them. The next slide, we want to show that blue element, identify the executive sponsor. I do want to leave the green circle there though, so I'll just delete that text and then delete all of these over here. And then moving on, I'm going to do something similar. I'll pause the video here and come back when that's done. All right, I've updated the slides. We just have one element being added at a time and just the one text on the screen at a time as well. And at the end, we'll display everything. Now to add the morph transitions. We'll leave the first slide alone, but the subsequent slides, I'll select that one, hit the shift key to select the rest of them, and then use the morph transition. For this one, to make it a little bit more interesting, let's also try the characters. And now we'll run it. I'll start at this top slide, and then shift F5 to start from this current slide. And you'll see as we're moving along here, the characters are moving. Where there's characters that are the same, you'll see that those get carried along the line. And our final slide. Okay, let me collapse this section. We'll move down to our map. For this example, I wanna show you how to pan around to the different places on the map so you can view them better. Maybe you're working with a global team and you wanna show where folks are, perhaps have them introduce themselves during a kickoff call. You could do a static map and a slide like this, but if you were to pan around to the different locations, it's gonna be a little bit more engaging and it actually feels a little bit more global that way as well. I'll do similar steps for this. I'll duplicate the slide and we'll do that one more time. So we have three different slides. One other thing I'm gonna do is to show the grid lines for this. This will just help us see where the actual slide is when we go to enlarge the images in just a second. If you're following along, feel free to do that or not. Now, in order to get that zooming or that pan effect, we need to zoom in on a particular area of the map. Let's say we want to zoom in on where Elizabeth lives, which is Los Angeles. To do that, we need to increase the size of the map. 
and I need to increase it to something larger than the slide because it currently takes up the entire slide. What I'll do is zoom way out on this slide down here on the bottom right. If you hit the minus button to zoom out, we'll go out pretty far here, 40%. And now I want to increase the size of this map image so that the United States is pretty prominent. And the reason I put the grid on here is so I can see where the actual slide is. It's a little bit difficult with this one since we have a white image. But right there where I've highlighted, that's the actual slide. Now we have two other slides that we need to use this on. And ideally, I'd like the map image to be the same size for all of those. So rather than just kind of eyeballing it here, I'll double click on it, come into the picture format tab, and let's make this one an even 14 inches. Perfect. Now we'll align that again so that Elizabeth is in Los Angeles. And then I'm going to delete the images for the other two folks here, just to get rid of those. They'll have their own slides in a minute. Coming here, I'll do the same. This one is going to be for Daniel down in Cape Town. We need to do similar steps to increase the size of this image. So we'll double click. We'll make this 14 inches. And then we'll need to drag this image Daniel's in Cape Town, so I'll position that right about there. Once again, you'll see the actual slide is quite a bit smaller. If you wanted to, you could crop this image so it's not hanging off the edges of the slide, but you don't have to. When you're in slideshow mode, it won't show. The last one we want to do is for Katashi in Japan. So we'll delete those other images. Once again, we'll increase the size of the map to be 14 inches high, and then we'll reposition this over here in Tokyo so that that's more prominent on the part of the slide that's going to display. So we've got Lisbeth here in LA. So on the actual slide, we're zooming in on the United States. We've got Daniel down in South Africa and then Katashi up in Japan. The last thing we need to do is add the morph transitions. We'll keep this first slide that shows the entire globe. So we'll just select the three subsequent slides, go to transitions, morph. And here I also like the characters effect. So we'll select that. And now let's play it from the top. So there we're zooming in on Lisbeth. Down to Cape Town where Daniel is. And then up to Katashi in Tokyo. So there you have it. That's how you work with PowerPoint morph transitions to make more professional and engaging slides. If you found this content valuable, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing.